Okay, to find the midterm, uh, you will go to your modules. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to now go back because I'm on the midterm. So I'm on my, uh, I've gone to quizzes. It's in the module for this week. Let's go back. And our module this week is week seven, 19 to 24. It was scheduled for the 19th, but last week I said we'd do it today. And you can click on the underlined portion. Takes you directly to quizzes. And you take the quiz by reading through the questions and marking the best answer. So this is 76 points. The time limit is two hours. I think that is excessive, but I want to make sure that no one has um, a problem with that. And I have given us two hours to work on it today, and I will have to work with people who are not here or they may be taking it on their own. So let me show you a preview for this. And it will be exactly like uh, it will actually come up for you. So it'll say question one, each question's two points. Ironing is best done at, and you would just then mark the correct answer. So remember that when you're doing multiple choice, you are wanting to do the most correct answer. So if one answer seems incorrect, then you would not select the all of these answer. If uh, one answer is most correct, that's what you're going to select, okay? So just always be aware of that. If you don't understand one, just move right on down. And then you can, uh, when you, I think I've made it so that when you see this, let me see if I can stop at the end. I can't remember how to get out of this format. Okay, and then at the end you will submit and it will grade it for you. So you'll have your answer right there. So this is questions based on what we've done in lecture, questions based on what we have done in uh, our labs, our sewing labs, the sewing portion, uh, plays, all of the things that we've discussed are in this little, uh, in this little midterm. And then when you're done, let, I'll be right here let me know and then I will take you to a breakout room so I can see you thread your machine. So Smenson, because you're on a time frame due to the hospital, we will do that later, okay? okay. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording, pause. Rec All right, so there really you need three things for measurement. You need a, an elastic that we can use to put around the waist because that is a place where we will measure two and measure from. You need a flexible tape measure. And if you um, are aware of the person that you're measuring, generally flexible tape measures go up to 60 inches, which is five feet. I have had people that are larger than the tape measure. You never want to embarrass your actor. So you want to make sure that you are using, there are tape measures that go up to 108. So you want to make sure you always have one of those on hand in case you need that so that when you're measuring the waist, you're not uh, embarrassing your actor in any way. And then you want to have a very good measurement sheet and we've posted those on our site. So I'll screen share the measurement page just for a moment so that you can see those. And I'll go to my desktop so that I have most flexibility. Here is our course. So you can see as we are getting more organized in our weeks, this was last week, this is this week, and I have our to do's uh, published. And also, actually I'll do this right now. I have our coming attractions published. So let me get the page up. And then we will always have this for each week so that now at the very end of the week you'll see our midterm is over and you'll see coming attractions so next week looking forward with our forward looking cow your play critique will be due your crew handbook color collage for the emotion of your antigone play i'll i can show you some demos we'll be discussing that next week your sewing portfolio should be complete and you should understand the measurements that we're discussing today. So 
we are going to now go to the measurement page. Let me go back. Now I'm wondering if I published it because you not only do you have to make the page, then you publish the page. So let me just go to pages. I can go to any page and then I can look at all pages. You guys have the option of pages as well. And then I will select measurement. All about measurement. So first of all, let's discuss, um, let's do wig measurements first. This is very valuable. If you uh, remember, if you click on your icon, then you can see it. should open. Where is it? There we go. Very handy. This group called Wig Boys will do lace front wigs, which is a wig that is has hand tied hair in the front to create a hairline for you. When I had to do men in 1930s costumes and they need they had hair like this and they needed to have a very specific wig. This worked really well. So this is how you measure for a wig and you measure the circumference A, which is the circumference of the hairline. So on me, this would be measuring from here. Actually, you know what I need to pin so that you can, uh, uh, I'll do this afterwards, but I'll show you how to do that. So the circumference of the hairline, this is the measurement of the hairline from, the, from where the hair starts at the forehead to the nape of the neck. This is the measurement from the top of one ear to the other ear across the top of the head. And this is from behind the ear to the behind the other ear, which is the width of the nap, the nape of the neck in back. Okay. And those measurements are important because we will look at, let me see if I can minimize this. I'm hoping if I do this, it's not going to go. Yeah, it did took me off the canvas. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing for the moment. Anyway, that is in your measurement page. And when we talk about our measurement sheet, which you all can download now, and let me just do a second screen share so that I can get that pulled back up for us. Pam, I just refreshed and it's not in modules. Okay, let me uh, uh, hold on a minute. So I'm not even on my, my Canvas page has disappeared <laughs> with that latest move. So let me try and go on that. I have to go back on pipeline right now and pull that up. Thank you for your help telling me what you're seeing. And I'm signing back in because, of course, as we all know, Pipeline signs us out at every opportunity. So now I'm signing back into my course. And let me get the measurement page up. And again, it will be a page, not an assignment, because this is just a page. And OK, so let me now screen share for us, and we'll be able to look at this. So we can look right at our course modules. And now if you refresh, you will see all about measurement, because it's coming attraction for next week. So here we have all about measurement. Yep, it's there. Okay. And then we had how to measure a wig. The reason why I showed you that is because if we look at our measurement sheet, the measurement sheet that we've developed at Santa Barbara City College, um, you will see that we include the head circumference, the ear to ear, the forehead to nape, and the lobe to lobe measurements. So I wanted you to have a visual description for that. 
as well as these other measurements that we are going to cover today. And remember that the measurements above this line, this solid line, are the ones that the actor should be able to provide and they really almost never can provide them. So they'll say, you know, I wear a medium or I wear, usually they have a shoe size idea, but you really want to quiz them when you're asking about their shoe sizes and have them identify, is that a regular? Is it a medium? Is it a wide? Is it a narrow? And often people really don't understand and they'll have to take their shoe off and look. If they're wearing a sports shoe, sports shoes tend to run small. So they may be wearing a sports shoe that it says size 12, but they in a dress shoe, they might be an 11. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's all, everything's quite mysterious. And let's go back because I have given you a hat size conversion chart. Let me see if I, if I uploaded that. Here we go. So this is a hat size conversion chart, which is very important because almost no one knows their hat size. So if your head is in inches, you measure your head and I'll show you where you do that, or in centimeters, then it would be fitted in one of these hat sizes. When, you're re when you are buying a hat, you're buying it by this fitted size, seven, seven and an eighth, seven and a quarter. Easy fit means it's just like small, medium, and large clothing. It's not going to be as specific. And I don't even know what size stretch fit means. I think it means that you could possibly work these two into a stretched size. So there's just an idea there. So when we go back to our measurement sheet, this is where hat size is, is memorialized. We will do a head circumference that you need to clarify whether it's for a wig or for a hat. And I'm gonna demonstrate those two different measurements because a wig measurement is gonna give you much greater circumference than a hat size measurement. So that's something to keep in mind. So this is our major measurement sheet. We print pink for women and blue for men just so that we can easily cover it. So let's look at the diagram. This diagram shows you where these measurements are taking place. So you can look, I'm going to do this on a mannequin. So I'll show you that M to M is a shoulder measurement and it says shoulder here. Chest measurement, this is above chest. Bust is over the fullest part of the chest uh, from shoulder to waist here over the bust. So this is a really good description because it lists front measurements and back measurement. So next size around the base of the neck. I'm going to go through these measurements visually, back width, and then we call front back width because it's not going to go all the way around. Nape to waist and waist to floor. So we will cover all of these measurements. One of the other uh, very handy things that I use and cannot live without is the measurement grid. And this document allows for the major measurements with name, actor name, character name, and the major measurements, whether they're men or women. So if we have a big cast, uh, this class that we have right now, I think is, well, the last cast was 17. It might fit all on one page. This helps me have a one page roadmap for pulling costumes and for also looking for shopping costumes for whatever I need to do. I always organize it from smallest to largest because I know if I fit my largest person, I can always go down sizes. I can be much easier to take in than let out. So it will give me my bust at the largest measurement, my waist at the natural waist, hip at the largest hip, and we'll cover inseam and outseam. This is waist to knee. What size they say they wear in pants, what size they wear in a dress or coat. This is neck and sleeve length as used by men's measurements. So it's the neck around the base 
and from the nape of the neck to the wrist, which I will demonstrate front and back, neck to waist. So front and back, so we know what those waist lengths are, front and back across the shoulders, height, weight, their hat or their hat measurement, their shoe size, and we have one column that's left. We often put in bra size or if there's anything in particular that you want to add. But you have these so that you can download them. It makes it, um, this may have started at some point and we've modified it and changed it and all that kind of stuff. Feel free to use it if you ever have a chance to uh, want to use something like that. Okay, let's go to our visuals. Again, if you click on that, you can download it in print, which we've talked about before. All right, why is this so important? Well, we have a female mannequin here. I think I can do it better if I lift this up and tilt it down. Okay, I have a female mannequin. We label them on the outside, so it's size 10. We know her neck is 14 and 3 quarter, shoulder 15 and a half, bust, waist, and hip. We keep them covered for sun damage. But for example, in this most recent show, we had a number of uh, women that were this size. And we had a woman who is in the most recent show, meaning looking back, looking forward. And we have a woman who's this size. So it becomes very important to know the differences between these two and how the measurements are exactly the same measurements you take regardless of the size of the body, but that they translate into a visual. And you have to start learning how to visualize that. And then additionally, we have men. And that's why when we talk about this with bust and chest, it is uh, good to see men and women. Men have a fullness to their chest. Women have a fullness at the bust point. So I just want you to see that there's a wide variety of sizes and of what humans look like. We're fortunate in that we have mannequins that are in most sizes. So I'm gonna work with these two. And as I said, the first thing that we do is we tie the elastic around the natural waist. What is the natural waist? So this is not where you wear your pants. The natural waist is the break where the only place that you have bone is in the spine. The rib cage ends here and the hip bone starts here. So there's a spot where all you can do is bend. It's your bend or where you crease at the waist. So if you stand up and hold your waist above your hip and below your rib cage, it's where you bend and that's your natural waist. Usually it has some kind of relationship to the belly button, maybe slightly above or on the belly button. And that is the placement for a natural waist. We have found that it's much easier to use the natural waist than it is to use a, a contemporary waist because that is always changing, very fluid. In the 40s, men's pants were very high. And then we, for a couple of years, and in the 60s, they rode right about at the waist. Then in the 70s, we got to this sort of two inch below the waist mark. So I, I would mark my two inch below and the men's trousers kind of lifted right here, rested on the top of the hip bone. And now we're somewhere around four to six inches below the waist. So it depends on what, what someone's preference is for the way they wear their pants. So this doesn't help us in terms of actually figuring out what the body size is, but we need to know what the contemporary size or the fashion is or how this person wears their pants by indicating it on our measuring sheet and indicating how far down it is from the natural waist. So that's why we measure to the waist. So we're going to look at our female. And I uh, actually I was going to measure the do the head measure before you first. So when we are doing a head circumference, if you're doing it for a hat, you're going to wear it the way you wear your hat. 
which is this way. And you want your, your hat to sit on the head firmly, but not tight. And that is different from the wig boy wig measurement, which is measuring the hairline from here. You would put on a wig cap and measure it where you actually have your hairline, which is this. All right, so two different kinds of head measurement. Typically you're doing a hat measurement unless you're wigging. And then those other measurements stay the same, which are over the ear, ear to ear, under uh, lobe to lobe. This is if we have to put a um, band on, like you're wearing a band hat, something like that. The nape measurement goes from the back of the ear to the back of the ear. Forehead to nape would be from the hairline down to the end of the hairline in back. So uh, I have worked, so there's the end of my hairline. That would be my measurement. And I've worked with many um, makeup artists and they're thrilled that you're actually taking those measurements because then that, that helps them and that's something they don't have to worry about. We'll work on the basic measurements that we are using today. The neck measurement, we have a, a low measurement and a high measurement. So at the base of the neck is where the neck fits the shoulder. There is a higher measurement because in some periods, particularly in the Victorian, you want a shaped collar that would go up. The neck above is generally smaller than the neck at the base, unless someone maybe has some extra fullness in their neck or double chins, and then you want to be aware of all of those things. And in that case, you might cut the neckline down so that you're not squeezing the neck. Interesting thing about neck measurements is every singer, and particularly opera singers, they think their neck is 20. They can come in, their neck could be a 16, but they really want to have enough room to breathe. And the kind of the more classical singer you are, the more room that you want. Okay. And um, so I'm just going to go down the measurement sheet. There are some sheet. There are some measurements that are are more esoteric for actually draping and flat patterning anything. When you have the body well measured, you can literally trace it out on a piece of paper on a flat table, and that's the advantage of this kind of a measurement uh, technique. The other thing is, if you're making a very fitted garment like a corset, you really need to have a series of measurements. So this measurement sheet covers everything. And we usually have uh, someone come in, they make an appointment for a measurement. We take a picture of them full body, full back, side, back. So front side and back, and then a headshot so that we know who they are. So let's go to measurement. I thought I had a sheet, but I don't. So as I said, we work with pink and blue. So our sheet is pink and we've covered our head and neck. The next one is over bust and we need that. Sometimes people can carry extra fat right up here on the top of their back. I certainly have some right now. So you want this over bust measurement. It tends to be a bit slanted because the arm gets in the way. But ideally you're looking for parallel to the floor. Then we go to the fullness of the bust or chest. So that is the biggest part of the bust. We go right over the bust point. Notice that when I'm measuring, I'm not touching the body very much. I'm using my tape. I'm putting my hand backwards to the body and then I have my hand in between the bust. I'm not putting it over the bust, okay? You wanna make sure that you're always as modest as possible and that you're not embarrassed by what you're doing, then the actor will not be embarrassed. For women, the fullness of the bust tends to be the largest measurement. Sometimes for men, if they have been working out, their above chest is hot, is um, more built up. They have big pecs and then their chest measurement might be slightly smaller. So you wanna just be aware of that. 
under bust, this is the best measurement to decide what is someone's bra size. So under bust is 31. This is where your bra should actually fit you. And the difference between, oops, sorry, I need to pin, I guess. I forgot to do that. And, all right. So the difference between the under bust and the bust is the cup size, okay? And that is a whole nother measurement thing, whether you're ABC, the number of plus from here to here, plus five gives you a D cup, that kind of thing. So, so that's I have a question about the under bust. I never, on women, is it where the breast naturally falls creates no. the under breast or do you get up under their yeah. rib cage? Lift the bust up. Okay. You're absolutely lifting the bust up so that on a human, and this is a good, very, very good point, but on a human, the under bust is under the fullness. So you'd if you're if you're naked, and that's interesting because really the first time I ever measured a real star was even recent, and it was like, you got to be kidding me. And I was, you know, thirty. Um, she stood in her pantyhose and naked. So the under bust is underneath the bust and then the fullness of the bus. So right now I'm 36 under and on top uh, 42. So that's a plus six and I wear a 36 double D. So that's, that is a relationship that you can have. Often what happens is you're wearing too big of a, of a, of a bra around and not enough cup. So that's a, that's a, a very typical thing that inexperienced people know and people uh, and inexperienced actors don't understand that. And also the people that are fitting you necessarily at um, Victoria's Secret or something like that may not have the kind of information. This used to be a real art when you went into a very good department store and they measured you for bra. They, those corsetry women understood how a bra should fit. So it Having a fitted bra that is the right size can make the difference in how someone looks and can make the difference of 10 pounds. So if you're sagging, you're gonna look plus 10. All right, so that's my underbust. Natural waist I've determined is here. This girl's nice and long waisted. So, you know, my waist is not as far from my underbust to my waist. Um, some people will be higher and that's, you just need to recognize that. The low waist, now this we have a place where we can do two inch, a uh, high hip would be four inch, and then the fullness of the buttock would be at the low hip, all right? So we would take at a two inch, we take this measurement at a four inch, which tends to be the high hip. And that way we have this measurement if this is where they're wearing their pants. And then this measure, the measurement of the fullness of the buttock varies between person. So you always wanna translate that across the body at eight inches as her fullness. Now, if you're working with someone who is my height and you're gonna work at the fullness of the, of the butt here, here's my waist, the fullness comes down to more like 11. So there can be a wide variety. That is a huge measurement because if you're not allowing for the fullness of the body and you're putting it everybody at eight, then someone like me wouldn't be able to get their pants up, okay? Because you need to allow the fullness of the body the whole way. If it's 11 to here for me, then there needs to be plus three as we go down that point, okay? That's just mathematical stuff and it's a pretty great way to think about how you would make a pattern and why you would have a certain kind of a fit on a garment. Okay, that's basically the torso. Then we do across the shoulders front and across the shoulders back. This tells us if someone's rounded shoulder, if they stand up straight, 
men to be tend to be slightly broader across the back because of muscle development. This is the measurement that we had that was called the back width on our little diagram. It's basically at just at the bottom of the armpit and in the front, the same. This is also called the yoke measurement. The shoulder, which is that M to N, is from the base of the neck to the hinge. So find your hinge in your shoulder right here, lift your shoulder up, and really that's where your arm moves. Your body does not move here, it moves right here. And that's when you get the best movement. When you're trying to have a lot of movement, you want to cut the arm's eye high so that you're not pulling from down here to have someone work. You don't want the arm's eye to be low, you want it to be high in the body. And then we also can do things like gussets. Okay, arm's eye would be around the armpit. And again, this just gives us how wide do you need right here, all the way around. And it gives us the idea of how big that sleeve hole needs to be. Center back to waist. Oh no, sorry, center back to wrist. So I have to do that on me. This again is your nape, this little bump. And you run that down the whole side to your elbow and to your wrist. So for me, that measurement is 33. If I'm gonna buy a man's shirt to fit me, it will be my neck by 33. So I would be for my shirt size in the top part, I would put 15 and then an X to indicate by 33. So that's shoulder center back to wrist. Then we do shoulder to elbow and a measurement here, right at this hinge point down to the crux of the elbow, which is 16 and a half for me. And then continuing from there to the wrist again. So for me, that would be 25 and a half. Okay, that's shoulder to wrist. Sleeve inseam is from the armpit to the wrist. So if I'm making an inside of my sleeve, I know it has to go that long. All right, then we're on the other side and we'll do our lengths. So these are basically all of our rounds and then our lengths. Center front to waist, center front is at the hollow of the neck, the base of the neck to that elastic and center back to waist. And then we continue that to the floor. So if we're doing a cape, we're doing a long gown, we're doing a jacket, or, or if I'm measuring something that's already made, I have an idea of maybe their waist is here, but they're longer to there. I know how long it would be before it would drag. So then I hold it here and measure to the floor. And this guy happens to be 63, so I'm gonna run out of tape. So I can go to here and then I can do my waist to floor. That is center back. Then we do center back to below seat. This is a jacket measurement. So center back to below seat, this is a visual. And this guy actually has a seam right here because that's a typical placement. And then we do to the back of the knee and you go under the bend of the knee, make that parallel and you see where that is. So for both, for women, that gives you a knee length of a skirt. And for men, it can give you breeches length. Okay, so that could be, that's a very important measurement. For women in particular, we do shoulder, the mid shoulder to the bust point. So we know where the fullness of the bust is on the mannequin on the, if we're making a flat pattern and then to the waist. And that tells us how much out front we have. Okay, so then you can really three-dimensionalize from this particular kind of measurement. Shoulder to bust point and then carry to the waist. Bust point to bust point. Again, we don't touch the body, but
but basically it is from the, the pointed part of the bust to the other side. It tells us how wide someone is, whether they're, some people are wider, some are narrower. So if I'm even doing that on a man, so that you get bus point to bus point and you know where that exactly is. Underarm to waist again. You try to have them stand in a natural position and you don't have them move their arm necessarily. Just say, I'm just gonna put this here and I go down to the waist and I'm measuring this seam right here from the arm, underarm to the waist, the natural waist. The inseam is always a very tricky one. People can get very uh, worried about that, but we ask the actor to hold the tape between their fingers like this and then have them pull up their pants, right? Because they wear them so low and have them hold that in the, in the center of the crotch. So they're doing this measurement. They're holding it here and then looking straight ahead. So I would be the actor holding it here. And then I am going to measure all the way to the bottom of the ankle bone. We measure to the ankle bone because again, for fashion, that could go all the way to the ground or where we are now above the ankle. So if you measure to the ankle, which is a very specific part on the body, you can, as the designer or the cutter fitter, determine how long the pants need to be for the particular uh, historical time period that you're working with. Okay, the next one that we do is, I'm gonna move that out of the way, out seam. And again, this is from waist. We do it down the side so that we're avoiding any of the shapes. Sometimes people have a, a, a protruding belly or a protruding uh, rear end, and we're gonna get to that. And we go from the out seam to underneath. So we have a verification of this at the same way as we did the center back. To the ankle, again, to the top of the ankle, and then to the floor and that's why they need to be in bare feet. The next measurement also is a really important measurement for trousers. We do it on everybody. Call, and you just kind of have to do it with the grain of salt. Sometimes we call it the whoopee measurement. We ask the actor to hold the tape at the center front and move their legs. I'm gonna reach between your legs down at the knee and pull the tape through to the center back waist and then ask if that's firm, not tight, but firm. That is the half girth. The full girth is from the um, base of the neck through the body up to the base of the neck and back. Extremely important for any kind of jumpsuit or fitted garment. The half girth is essential for men's trousers. So we just have to have that. The rise is a, a measurement that we take with the L square. We have them sit on a table and I'll demonstrate that after we finish the rest of these. The thigh at the highest part of the thigh, the thickest part of the thigh. And if you visually see that the right or left is different, you might wanna take both. And then you do above the knee and below the knee. And again, this measurement is essential for plus fours or for knickers. The calf at the fullest part and then around the ankle. The foot we trace on the, on the back of the paper at an angle and I'll show you a foot tracing. Here we go. And the great thing about this is, so there's a foot tracing right and left. And when we take a measurement across the ball of the foot, around the ball of the foot, we can, we can just put a line and put a number. And then we take a boot measurement. So one of the other things we can do is Xerox that, cut it out, and we can take it to storage and make sure that the foot will fit into the shoe. So I will show you um, the ball, the instep, and the boot measurement. Let me go to the floor. 
And we have the actor with their bare feet standing on a piece of paper. So it's pretty, very hygienic. I have very large feet. So I'm gonna be, and you know, and men sometimes have large feet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is trace all the way around. People are ticklish, <laughs> it's kind of funny. And then I will do the ball of the foot, which is over the major toe bones right here. The instep, you ask them to lift their foot up and then you do their instep. This tells you how high of a vamp you need on a shoe. And then you do the boot measurement, which is from the back of the heel to the instep so that 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 measurement is the narrowest that they can get like this when they have to slide their foot into the shoe. So each one of these measurements has a very specific purpose. And you know, you can determine when you're working on a show if you need each one of these measurements. I I decided that we would take them all because we have actors that we work with for years. And that way we don't have to call them back in every second when we're doing something. All right, then we have biceps. Please ask your gentleman, you know, to make, a, to flex because you wanna make sure that you're getting the fullest part instead of relaxed. You wanna get that muscle. Their bicep is over the bump that you have. The forearm is the same, flex and you get the fullest part of the forearm. Again, you don't want your sleeves too tight. This can also be a long glove measurement. And then the wrist right over the wrist bone. And that's really indicative because for example, I'm a six and a half, I'm not actually quote big boned. I'm tall, but I'm not exactly big boned. If I had a seven, I would be more large bone. And the wrist tends to be a place where you don't gain or lose weight. So it, it is a good indicator of what is happening under the structure of the body. And then the glove measurement is here. And I realize I can post a glove sizing chart as well for you. And then we ask whether they're right or left-handed and I'll show you the rise measurement. I think I can do it here. So we ask them to sit on the table this is a very high table, but they remember I'll tie the elastic around my waist because these guys don't bend very well. And I'll get the L square. So the rise tells me how far off the ground to the natural waist, which is the straight side of the of the trouser before it curves. It's a very important measurement. And depending on if you have more or less padding, you might need to have a longer rise. So. Depending on what's folding under here, you need a longer rise. So you have them sit up straight on the table and you take this measurement, the L square is square on the table to the waist. So my rise would be 11 and a half. And again, I'm a long body. I'm along this way as well, short waisted. So that's the last measurement. And it's probably more than you ever needed to know. <laughs> Questions? That's fascinating. I've never seen anyone take a rise before. Yeah. That's awesome. Really important. Okie doke. Uh, I'm going to unpin everybody. Sorry about this. Let's see, what do I have to do here? There's something I have to do. Here we go. All right, so that's a full measurement sheet. We have a, it's a very thorough measurement sheet. You can literally have enough information to make every garment. And I will tell you just a fun thing for me, which was when I was in LA, um, 
you know, I did casual labor when I wasn't working on a project. And so I got to measure for the Lord of the Rings movies because they were taking place somewhere else. And I got to go to Orlando Bloom's house and measure him and, you know, you're, and you're measuring everything because they're not going to see these people until maybe a week before they work and they need to have everything really in really far along progress in terms of construction. So accurate measurements is really important. That's a good, just a good tip. All right, that's the end of class for today. I'm gonna to stop the recording.